What's happening, everybody? I'm Monkey Mike's Monkey Wrench, and thanks for joining me today. Today, you can see I have the Miata behind me, and I'm so excited. I'm actually losing sleep over this right now because the brake fluid came in a little bit late last night, and, you know, like I said, it's about 3 in the morning. I just couldn't sleep over it, and so I went and got my trash bag. This is how I prep to do any type of stuff with hydraulic fluid. Being that I'm going to be pouring it in here, I just basically, I cup this like that, take the razor blade and just slice it and pull it over. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. But I wanted to show you guys the brake fluid I got, which is the Bosch ESI-6. And as you can see here, it says it's compatible with dot three, four, and 5.1, which is not to be confused with dot five. It says it right here as well. Now, one thing that I was a little disappointed about when I was looking at this, I was hoping that this stuff wasn't going to eat my paint right there at the bottom you can see this will damage car paint Ooh, oh well i was kind of hoping that if you know we went something that was synthetic maybe it wasn't going to be so corrosive but it's hydraulic fluid either way i guess it's corrosive no matter which way we go about it so protect your stuff we've got our handy dandy vacuum bleeder kit deal there how i do this is pretty simple you just pull the bag tight here put a little slit in it make sure you go both directions no, not too much though because you want to make sure that it has room to stretch you can even just kind of take it around the rim there. Just pull it down, and that's it. So now you've got to seal with the bag. You don't have to do anything special. And as you pour your brake fluid, hopefully it'll be able to get you know, in the crevices here, and you'll be able to get a towel on it before it makes too much of a mess. Speaking of which, always have a towel handy. Always have a towel handy. No, you're a towel. For the most part, I'm all ready to go. I'm just gonna wait until morning time. I just wanted to get this prepped. I know that sounds really dumb. I don't feel like crawling out of the car right now. It's really nice outside and it's also three in the morning. So if I open the garage door up, I'm gonna be making a bunch of noise and looking like a weird tweaker. So I'm just going to go take myself back inside, play some video games till I fall asleep. And then I will be back out to do this shortly. See you in a few. All right, so after about an hour or so tinkering with different things, I decided that I think I could tackle at least the clutch from up top here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get after it. I've got another plastic bag down here, all kind of stuffed in place. And then down there on the actual slave cylinder, I have an eight millimeter. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see, but down here there's an eight millimeter sitting on that little petcock of the slave cylinder. This unit here is extremely easy to use. So only one hose is going to transfer fluid. The other one is going to stay dry as it's just used for vacuum here. We have our little nipple deal that goes on the other, well, I don't know, I guess the other one's a nipple and this goes on the end of that. Uh, whatever, this is the female piece. We have an assorted amount of T's and whatnot. This is the one that fits on the actual slave cylinder. Uh, as you see, there's the regular cap. So this is also extremely easy to deal with. Uh, you have this one here, which is where the vacuum passes through and the fluid is gonna drop down into here. We're gonna use one of these little hoses there. You put that on here and that's what keeps it bubbling down there. And then this is what you use if you need to take it off and cap it so you can transfer the fluid. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward after that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get at it, see if I can get this done with limited to no issue. And again, I have that down there just in case, anticipating that, you know, ex expect the worst, but hope for the best kind of thing. And that's what I'm gonna go about here. So give me a moment to get set up and we'll see what kind of footage I can get for you.
important to make sure that this little seal, which just popped out on me, make sure that this actually stays in place because that's crucial. Make sure you don't get brake fluid everywhere and that this does maintain a vacuum. Also, make sure to put the, re the receiving hose. It's going to be on this here. So I'll put this down, make sure that nice and tight. And then put this on this side here. So as the fluid comes in, it goes down that tube and then bubbles. That's how we know if there's still air in the system. So I'll put this side here. Okay. And then the side goes to a little vacuum hand pump here. Now the unit is complete. Whoops. All right, so next we're going to take this little nipple cap deal, take our pump, feed this, feed this down into the crevice that you need to get into because that's what it feels like. You can see what kind of room we're dealing with here. Also, get this all situated. There we go. Can we have that out here? Oh, that's perfect. That's awesome that we can actually have this. Well, maybe, maybe. Let's see if we can position this somewhere. All right, so you have your reservoir here. We've got the cap on the other side, and I'm just feeding it down here. Seeing if I can keep the reservoir up top. And just put this hose down there. Looks like it worked. Make sure that I can get to my wrench. So try to get everything to where it's somewhere comfortable. Here I have the pump, as you can see, I've got the hose routed down there to where this kind of stays stationary so I can see if it's bubbling fluid. And then I'm just gonna pop that loose. And once I quit seeing it bubble, the, that means that we should have no more air in the line. And I could just go ahead cap that off because it'll be wide open so basically what you're going to do is just fill it there and you're just going to pump the fluid through until it quits bubbling in here so the likelihood is is i may have to empty this but what i'm hoping is is before it gets full it quits bubbling and that's really just the idea here so i'm going to start pouring the fluid in there and we'll get at it Once you get it set right, I just have a very small amount of vacuum on it, and you can see you can see it moving the fluid. Don't worry guys, I got a light coming soon, so we'll actually be able to see it a little bit better. But let's give you an idea how it works. You can see it pulling all the air bubbles through. And mostly it's just air bubbles. Very, very little fluid. None is actually making it into the reservoir. We just lost vacuum. You can see we just don't have a whole lot of fluid moving. It just takes some time. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. It's just a very slow moving process. But again, it's efficient. It's something you can do on your own. You can save your fluid. You don't have somebody sitting there holding a pedal and doing all this crap, which is quicker. Most definitely that's quicker. This is still quite efficient. See, it is later, like I said, got the garage open so you can see a lot better. I've got some fluid in the main brake reservoir. I've got the clutch pretty much done. I'll show you earlier, or later, show you earlier. I'll show you later how the clutch looks, I guess, to the best that I can. I think it needs a little bit of adjustment because of the new pressure plate, which should help tighten it up. It just has like, maybe an eighth to a quarter inch of play right at the beginning of the clutch. And I don't like my pedal to be loose at all. I don't like anything loose. So that's that. I'm gonna head under the car right now. We got all the stuff that we need right here to get on with doing the brakes. So yay, this is the part that sucks because you have to get out and refill this and then go back under the car, do this part and then refill and rinse repeat until you get all done. So give you guys an idea of what it looks like from under there. Get yourself situated under the car, find your caliper that's furthest from the brake reservoir. This is gonna be the passenger rear tire. You can see right there, we've got our cap, a little pet cock deal. So we'll pull that cap off. This guy here. And then we'll put the hose, well first, put the wrench down. That's so that we can get to that. The hose. 
the hose over the end. As you can see there, that should do for the most part. I'll probably have to hold this on here, which is fine, but still, it just kind of helps ensure that there's an actual seal happening. And then I can use my other hand to work the pump. All right, so we take this, put this up here. All right, we're just doing this that way. It's not sitting there hanging. Okay, you can see it's building vacuum now. And then pop it open. And that's really all there is to it. See, we're getting no fluid at all. Definitely seems to be bubbling a bit. Now, I've been wondering, I have a theory that it's coming through the threads. I would expect there to actually be some sort of fluid coming out of this. So all I did was open the brake line. It shouldn't have completely drained out the fluid from all the way back here at the caliper. So I'm a bit confused why we're not hardly getting nothing. And we've got what seems to be a good seal. See, we've got vacuum. It's pretty much holding the entire time. And that's just opening the valve a little bit. All right, and we're back. So everything is done. The clutch is bled, the brakes are bled. I had to get my wife's help because apparently the clutch, or excuse me, apparently the brakes in the Miata, they have enough pressure here at the master cylinder that this vacuum pump just wasn't able to overcome it and actually suck the fluid through. I don't know if maybe that's because the ESI 6 maybe is uh, thicker or has a different viscosity that doesn't allow it to pull through like DOT 3 usually does. I've used these before with success, mainly watching somebody else do it. But at the same time, we always ended up using the pedal, just like we just did this time. Uh, I have my lovely wife help me. Thank you so much if you're watching this, babe, or if you ever do. I appreciate your help. Um, everything is done now, so I'm very glad that I used what I did. So I'm really glad I put that stuff down there, because if you can see, it looks like a dog pissed on it. Yeah, I made a mess. That's for sure. And then we had the same issue here. Um, I just hiccuped while you know, putting some fluid in and it peed a little there and it peed a little there. So uh, easy way to fix this is as you see everything is, uh, you'll use your towel, you'll clean up the majority of the mess and then you just gently lift it off, throw it in the trash. Easy peasy. This one here, do the same thing, reach down there. You want to try to clean it is you want to try to clean up as much of that as possible before you go in there and do that just because if you just yank it out you might splish splash throw it around that kind of stuff um but otherwise she's ready to go on that front i might just take her down take her for a drive i don't think there's anything else we have to do really to actually go driving now uh make the hood hole i did decide i'm definitely going to keep that there so we need to make the hole for the exhaust and then we need to heat wrap it we've got the heat wrap right here and then i've got the little titanium or the little hooks or the clamps heat wrap clamps right there we're almost ready to go kids all right so that's it for today got the brakes and the clutch all done it feels real stiff too it's toy toy I got some nasty cotton mouth. I'm going to go inside and get me something to drink. That's it for me today. Peace, guys.